Okay, let me come back on this uh, slide in order to try to, to show with uh, an example our the situation. The example will concern a planner cooling robot in a singular configuration. Okay? Now, in this configuration, it's, uh, let me say, easy to visualize uh, the image of the Jacobian. Why? Because we do know that uh, in this configuration, I can uh, produce linear velocity that are tangent to the circle that is composed by the two link because this is a, a this angle here is zero so this is basically the radius of a circle and i do know that this is the velocity that i, I can provide with certain q dot okay so basically this is a, Ah, sorry, let me. This is the range of J. Okay. Now, I do, let me say, understand intuitively that the null of J transpose here is any linear force acting here okay because a linear force here is just uh, absorbed by the mechanical structure of the planar turing robot so it means that uh, i do visualize uh, sorry i do visualize this one and now I can also try to understand why this relationship holds. Because the orthogonal to the null space of J transpose, that is the red subspace here, the red line here, this orthogonal is the image of j okay now for this simple structure we can easily visualize the concept of image of jacobian and uh, new space of j transpose of course for more complex structure is more difficult to visualize it and uh, for the orientation is a little bit more difficult uh, than for the uh, linear uh, forces and linear velocities okay but uh, i hope that this uh, example clarify a little bit now clearly velocities and force are strongly related one each other in this robot in any robot sorry in robotics okay so in this case for example i see that uh, i cannot produce forces in a certain direction because i cannot produce forces in this direction of course and i can produce velocities in this other direction Okay, this was just to, to try to clarify this aspect. Let me uh, more or less quickly use the kinet kinematic static duality in order to understand what is the transformation between force and moments expressed in two frames fixed on the same rigid body without going 
too much into details, we use the kinet kinet kinetostatic duality in order to obtain a relationship that allow us to understand the transformation of forces and moments when two when two uh, when two when, when the two frames are, are attached to the same rigid body. Now, without going into the details, let me say that if I have a vector of forces and moment acting on a certain uh, rigid body, expressed in the same rigid body, I can uh, express in another frame attached to the same rigid body by means of this uh, simple Jacobian. Now, I mean, it's expression, it's just rotation and, uh, well, let me, and cross product Y, let me just uh, show you why. Let's just provide the, the interpretation of, uh, of this uh, uh, relationship. If I have uh, if I have uh, forces expressed in, in two different frame, well, the relationship between the two forces, so this is uh, force one expressed in frame one is given by basically simply the rotation of the linear force. However, the moment is given by, see, 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 a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. Okay, so let me. Okay, so the, Forces is given by basically the first uh, uh, block row multiplied by this vector. So the rotation of the force. However, for the moment, I need to also take into account a transportation term. And so I do have the rotation of the corresponding moment and then I do remember that this is uh, a vector product. So this is a vector product of uh, the force two expressed in frame two. First, uh, it is rotated in frame one, and then there is the transportation term given by uh, the, the vector position connecting the two, the origin of the two frames. Okay, this and uh, one to express in, in, in frame one. Basically, the intuition uh, is there. So this is L12, I have the two frames. How to, de to compose the force is intuitively quite uh, clear. The linear force I only need to rotate. And for the moment, I have a, a rotation of the moment and a contribution of transportation of linear force, effetto leva, diciamo. Okay? And this will be used later on to compute the, um, the dynamics of a robot. Okay, let us consider an application of this concept that is given by the manipulability ellipsoid. It's quite uh, interesting application of the kinetostatic duality and gives us some insight of the choice of the configuration of the robot more appropriate to make some work or better than other. We do know that from the quadratic form, if I, give, if I consider a generic vector of n dimension, 
x transpose x is equal one is a sphere. Okay, we we with unitary radius. We, we do remember this from the mathematical recap. And then x transpose x but multiplied by a positive definite function is an ellipsoid. And this ellipsoid has the principal axis taken from the eigenvector of the weight. Okay. And then the, the eccentricity of uh, uh, the ellipsoid is related to the singular values, so the, the, the eigenvalues, and then the, volu the volume is proportional to this one, okay? So we do know that here I have a matrix that somehow contains the information of how round is my ellipsoid, okay? If my ellipsoid is, has a very huge eccentricity, it means that uh, the singular values uh, are far each other numbers. It means that uh, this matrix is close to the singular. So this information is here, okay? Okay, let me try to, 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 to use this concept of the quadratic in order to build an optimization problem for my robot. So let me consider Okay, let me consider this geometric figure is a sphere of joint velocities with a norm equal to one, okay? What I do want to understand is how this, those points map into the end effect. I do know that for a redundant robot, this relationship holds, so it's just the pseudo inverse of the direct Jacobian. And thus, I can write it down that I have a Q dot transpose Q equal Q is J pseudo inverse VE. Then I have to transpose it, so it means that this is VE transpose, J transpose, and multiply the J set inverse, sorry, set inverse transpose, multiplied VE. If I just make the substitutions with the, trans with the transpose, uh, with the set inverse, I do obtain this quadratic form here. That's quite interesting because now this is a quadratic form. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that this is positive definite because as I told, as I said several times, when I do have uh, something like uh, x, x transpose is uh, similar to the square of a, a scalar. So from the mathematical aspect, this object here is always positive definite. It means that this is a quadratic form. Now, why this is interesting? Well, let me repeat where I started. I started from a sphere in Q dot and I ended in an ellipse in VE. Well, 
it means that uh, I start from a very round uh, set of points, for example, Q dot with the same velocity, okay, because it's a sphere, the same uh, magnitude. And in the end effector, I may have some direction in which the velocity is quite uh, small, in some other is quite large, but they all start from the same Q dot norm. So if you think uh, at a robot as a kind of machine that transform your joint velocity to end effector velocity, it means that if I'm here with a very stretched ellipsoid, my robot has certain direction where it's not really appropriate to generate velocity. And with the same joint velocity, some other directions are really appropriate. Okay? It's a kind of machine. And this information is, as usual, in the Jacobian. Because the kernel of the quadratic form is the Jacobian, the J transpose. It's always the Jacobian. The direction I given by JJ transpose A and the, um, the um, amplitude of the principal axis are given by the eigenvalues of JJ transpose. Then the square root, because of course this is JJ transpose. Okay? And the volume is proportional to this quantity. Look. What happened is if uh, a certain I, I, I'm in a kinematic singularity, it means that my lips is collapsing. I cannot provide a velocity in a certain direction. It means that one of the principal axes is zero, and the volume is zero. The volume of the ellipsoid, okay. If we understand this concept, we should understand why, if I take into account this guy here, and I want to have it, uh, this is a, a scalar, okay? And I want to have it uh, as large as possible, it means that I'm taking my robot away from kinematic singularity. Because if this goes to zero, it means that my ellipse collapsed in a line, in a segment, okay? And the information is in the Jacobian. Well, Quite interesting. Do we have uh, the same concept uh, for okay? Let me first make an quite late. Let me first make uh, an example. For a two-link planar robot, with the manipulability measure is this one, and then can you, I can maximize this with respect to the angle, and I see that uh, the configuration, which represents the most appropriate configuration to transform the joint velocities to an effector linear velocity only for the planar to link is this one or this one, okay? And I may also want to uh, optimize with respect to, with respect to the parameter A1 and A2, and I found it turns out that if the two links 
has the same length, I maximize uh, the manipulability measure. Okay. It means that uh, if I build a robot, uh, for example, in that way, and I'm working in that configuration, in this moment, uh, this is not a very nice machine to transform the joint velocity to the end effect or linear velocity. Okay, this is a result that is achieved by looking at the Jacobian, properly at the Jacobian. Okay, and this is a, a information both in the design of the mechanical structure of the robot, then in the use of the robot, the configuration. I need to work on this uh, desk. I need to put my robot here and I have to decide where to fix the robot on the desk and where to have my, my uh, pieces to be worth coming on. I can make those considera considerations in order to make the work more properly. And this has uh, control consequences because I want to avoid kinematic singularities, but also energetic consequences because if I work with a a, a, a machine that transforms the joint velocities to end effect velocities more appropriately, of course, this has positive energetic consequences. Sorry. Let me try to make a draw now of my planar robot in order to, to visualize a little bit the concept that I'm telling you. Now, this is my ellipsoid. That is, uh, this is my ellipsoid. It's just translated to the end effect for a better visualization. If you look at the ellipsoid, you can uh, verify that uh, when it is uh, 45 degrees, uh, something like, uh, okay, it's not here, let me say more or less here, it is kind of uh, no, round, close to a circle. However, when uh, it goes uh, close to the kinematic singularity, the ellipse starts been scratched with a, a big eccentricity and we know that when the robot is in this configuration this is a kinematic singularity and now here i have a zero area or volume in this case in an area because it's a two-dimensional a, a zero area of the ellipsoid okay and also here i can notice the same Okay, but this is true for velocity. And we could have uh, made this discussion earlier. Why are, are we bringing it here now in the statics class? The reason is that I just discovered that the Jacobian maps velocities and the transpose of the Jacobian maps forces it means that well if i make uh, the same computations with my forces starting from a sphere where all the motor torques are equal okay i end in a quadratic form where the only difference is that uh, is the inverse of the other one. So the other one was uh, V transpose J, J transpose minus one, V equal one. Well, this difference 
this makes the difference in the sense that I open my textbook in linear algebra and I discover that a quadratic form a quadratic form whose kernel is the inverse of another one they do have in common the eigenvectors so the direction of the principal axis and the amplitude of the principal axis are inverted okay this is a, a, a huge result because it means that in a direction where the principal axis for the velocity are small this is the best direction for the forces the two ellipses are in that are in that configuration this is one ellipse and this is the other if this direction is good for velocity i'm uh, sorry is bad for the velocity is good from here sorry from here is good for the forces there is a duality may i ask you when you want to push good that way you push in that way because in that way you are not using the muscle you're not using the joints and this can be seen if uh, i if i draw on the left the velocity manipulability ellipse that we just saw a few seconds ago and on the right the force manipulability ellipse i can notice that look uh, for example this configuration this direction is good for the velocities the tangential is good for the velocity this is a good transformation however if i want to exert a force here it's not very smart if i want to exert a force if i hold a weight this is not the right configuration to do it it's good to make training but it's not uh, energy efficient and this can be noticed here because in that direction the forces the linear forces and are not appropriately appropriately mapped from the joint torques however in the other direction yes in the direction is the the dual with respect to the, the robot has a, a velocity transformation. Okay, so this is a very important result in robotics. The robot uh, is a kind of machine that transforms torques and uh, angular velocity into forces and, uh, uh, and effector velocities. And we just discovered that some configurations uh, that this concept uh, is uh, is dual in the sense that some configuration are uh, more appropriate for one operation than the other and those two are dual concept okay and this is what is written here is a kind of transformer Okay, the robot. The, the point is always the same. My control objective is in a real world, in the Cartesian world, so it's the end effector. My actuators are here, and I need to make this transformation. And this transformation is related by the Jacobian. We saw last week the velocities are related by the uh, Jacobian and now we discovered that also the forces are related by the Jacobian in its transform in its transpose sorry uh, formulation okay statics mean that the robot should stay still this is the basic assumption okay so let me end with a, a couple of of uh, uh, example 
when we write uh, on an horizontal plane, I'm sorry for the uh, not Italian students, but I just copied this from the textbook. Uh, here it is written, uh, uh, writing plane. I should, uh, I should uh, uh, update the, the figure, I'm sorry. And okay, this is force and velocity can be understood. So if we consider our arm as a simplified uh, trilling arm, this is the writing plane. Actually, when we have to write, we more or less all use the same configuration. More or less, we use this configuration. Okay. In this configuration, we, not, we don't write in this way. We don't put our hand and write in this way. In this configuration, it turns out that our Jacobians manipulability ellipsoid uh, are exhibit more or less these shapes. It means that we control force in order to press on the on the on the sheet of paper and velocity in order to advance more or less in this configuration. Okay, this is uh, just one one optimization result that is similar to what. Uh, that has some similarity to what we do when we write on a plane. And uh, another, I mean, mathematical uh, game can be made when we want to throw something from the bottom. And this is more or less the configuration that we, uh, that we exhibit. We optimize the velocity in the direction of throwing the object and we optimize the force in the vertical direction to hold the object so this is uh, those two are the manipulability the velocity and the force ellipsoid for this three link planar robot that can be more or less considered as a human arm throwing an object okay this is more or less the configuration that we uh, con that we uh, assume not assume there's configuration that we 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 implement when we throw an object okay okay so let me briefly Summarize, summarize what we have seen today, okay? Because I know that, uh, especially for uh, the students of uh, computer science, uh, some of the concepts uh, may be a little bit uh, uh, difficult to, 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 to uh, absorb in a, a short amount of time, especially the preliminaries. However, for the today's lecture, we actually only need to understand uh, this equation, okay? It's not really, let me say, important for the moment to understand how we arrived in this equation. What is really important is to understand uh, the physical consequences of this uh, relation and the relationship between velocity and force okay we will uh, discuss about the dynamics next week and also i will try to make it uh, let me say as simple as possible in the sense that uh, i will try to 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 to, to arrive at a mathematical model by keeping the main concept uh, that we need to understand how to control a robot without uh, too many uh, details uh, that are not really in your educational background. Okay, for today, this is really the main aspect together with the duality, the kinetostatic duality. Okay, okay, so we can stop we can stop here for today and also uh,